Welcome back to the channel. This is RGR and I'm Ryan going rogue. Big thanks for everything that you guys have done lately, including checking out the last video that was on the week 17 film room for the secondary. Today we're going to look at Terrell Suggs and the front. I know a lot of people have been asking about it and Terrell Suggs is one player, but he does bring a lot of swagger, a lot of extra to the front seven. And you can see that. They have played up and down through this season. And I think there's a couple of other key players that we're going to go over today, including Mike Pinnell and Reggie Ragland, who can help them depending on what their playoff game matchup is going to be. Especially against somebody like the Bills or even eventually the Titans. You never know what the scenarios could bring. They may have to stop the run as a precaution. And those guys are going to play key roles. But they also can bring some pass rush. And that's going to be key against everybody else. And then eventually we'll have a shot at seeing if they can get themselves in position to play the Baltimore Ravens. If they do, all this will become even that much more so important. Uh, and we'll go back over that step by step and how to utilize these players in particular. Now if you're new around here, hit the sub and the notification bell, leave your comment below, and give me a thumbs up if you like this particular video. This is a continuation of last video in looking at the film from the Chargers game, a way to kind of wrap up the season before they get into these playoff matches. And the front is really, really important. It's become a steadying force, and it gives you that, that wall where the secondary is good and the, and the front is good enough that they can push on each other and get tougher. Uh, and I think that's part of the progression that we've seen all season long. So at this point, I feel like they're a pretty rounded defense, and as long as they have the right personnel on the field at the time, they can get anything done that they need to. And I feel that they can beat anybody in this playoff race. So, that said, let's take a look at the film. And then we'll get looking at the next opponent once we know who they are. Had a lot of requests about Terrell Suggs and what he's doing for this team since he joined. And not just in motivation and bringing um, an edge and an attitude to this team. But definitely what he's doing on the field. And there's been so many requests. I want to make sure I get this one. This is his sack against the Chargers. And we're going to see him and another player or two as well. But want to show you this specifically because just look at the confusion that this brings. You have a conference going on here with pretty much the entire offensive line, particularly the center, Phillips, uh, I'm sorry, Philip Rivers, as well as uh, I think this is Eckler that's in the backfield at this time. And everybody's got to get on the same page because they have a unique alignment. You have Chris Jones out here at end, Tano Passanio lined up at tackle, and Frank is going to come down here and show us that, hey, he can rush the A-gap too. He's going to line up right over that first gap. And you see that the guard here has to say, this is where I'm going. This is the man that I'm taking. And what it leaves is you have a tight end out here that's going to try to block Suggs. And Neiman's actually going to drop out. His his responsibility in this coverage is to get some space. And so that is going to leave an extra blocker in here, but you're going to see what happens. And this is, this is the experience of Terrell Suggs. And by the way, this is Watts in here at this point in the game. This is later in the game with Watts playing at the free safety spot. As we roll forward, we're going to go kind of slow. And we're going to take a look at it. The play starts, and it's basically man here. Jones is going to go around the outside, and Eckler's looking to the inside because that's what they're worried about, the pressure is right up the middle because it is Frank Clark. Over what started as an A-gap is now engaged with the, the left guard here. Eckler's still watching this. Out here, you have a little bit of engagement here, but... Neiman's already opened up his hips, so this tackle understands that he's not getting pressure from him. You've seen Hitch kind of fake this before and then rush on a delay. That's something that's very effective because of what you see right here. When a defender opens his hips, it tells the tackle he's not coming. That is a very good sign. Not always the case, but a good sign. So they're going to open up and look for more work. As we roll forward here a little bit, Frank has beaten his guy to the inside. Now there's a huge gap here. If this is Pat Mahomes, he's taking this and running right up the gut. Most of the defenders, except for the two deep safeties, are not even paying attention. They have their backs to him at the second level. If this is Pat Mahomes, he can take off and run, but this isn't. This is Philip Rivers. He's not going to go anywhere. So Frank has actually beaten to the outside. He's a full gap over of where he was. And now you've seen that not only the tight end not pose a block, but this tackle, who was looking for work, tried to come in on Suggs, and Suggs has hand fought him off so now he's on the inside and comes in and cleans up the play i'm going to back it up so you can pay special attention to where suggs is at and that's right here as we roll it forward tight end is going to be nothing uh, it's a breeze basically he shimmies him realizes that that tackle's just waiting on him so it, rather than trying to take him on forcefully and go out the side he's going to try to dip underneath and watch these this hand work with suggs bam 
underneath a little bit of a rip and he gets clean to the quarterback. That's what Terrell Suggs brings to this team right now. Now, this play is going to be interesting because this is a player that that I have watched grow. Uh, he has started to become exactly what I hoped that he would, and that is 59 Reggie Raglan. And what they have here is a full offensive line with a single back in Gordon. They have an extra lineman and a tight end in line. This is a huge jumbo formation. You might see this on the goal line. You definitely see it when it's short yardage. And what you are seeing also is alignment with uh, Chris Jones, Naughty inside. They're in there amongst the guards. Uh, I'm. You may have seen them go a little bit more uh, A-gap, A-gap with Jones, but this particular alignment, they decided to go on the outside in the two technique. And this is Tano Passino guarding the edge on that side if it's a quick out or something like that with Damian Wilson available as well. And you can see the linebackers have responsibilities and Frank Clark is way out wide. But this is what is special. What you see here, Juan Thornhill's still in the game at this point, but signals from Rivers. Raglan is just watching. He's got a couple of uh, what is a six lineman, so you got to hope that he's athletic enough to beat him, and uh, a left tackle that is uh, suspect at best. As Rivers sets the, the offense in here, goes to make the snap, Frank kind of doubles down, and Reggie's already coming. He sees where his gap responsibility is. My guess is there's a, a change over here with Hitchens trying to guard the backside and guard this as well. And as he goes, he's already slid over. This is down block, down block, down block. This is zone to the other side. But Reggie knows as they all take the step in the direction that he's going, he probably had this on film, and that's why he got off to such a good start. He's coming down, and he's shooting this gap. And it gets a little contact, but he gets through to the back. It does help that Chris Jones kind of cuts off the front as well. But this is a really nice instinctual play by Reggie Raglan. It shows just exactly what he can do. And we're going to see it again here full speed because that's a nice thing to see. That's what Reggie can do too. They're going to need this down the stretch in the playoffs. This is a play to pay attention to what's going on. This is post-injury to Thornhill. And there's quite a number of DBs out here. This is a four-safety set. This is Tyron Matthew, Armani Watts, Kendall Fuller, and I am considering him a safety at this point, especially when he's lined like this where he's at the back of the defense. And then you have Dan Sorensen along with Breland, and you're going to have Traverius Ward out here to the wide side. The key is watch what happens with Armani Watts. Now, this is what he brings. He's now basically at the second half playing this role where he and Fuller are playing two deep safeties. They are exchanging what their roles are and trying to come up. We saw another play earlier in the game where Fuller really had a nice a nice sniff out on uh, a behind the line of scrimmage play that he came up and, and really stuffed very well. This is going to be similar for Watts. Watts is going to be tracking a particular player, and as Henry goes in motion... Watts is going to come with him. He's That's going to give away to Rivers that they have man-on-man, -man, and that's that's fine. The play is going to be a little bit different as they roll forward. i got to slow this down. You're going to see this is pin and pull. These guys are getting out. This is going to be a pitch, or it could have been a screen had they decided to run it the same way. You have a wide receiver trying to rock, block Frank, and you know that that's never good. But this is Watts tracking his man out here. He realizes that this is a reach block, and he's got to beat him to the outside, but he's also got his eyes into the backfield. And as Rivers pitches the ball to Eckler, right now Watts is paying attention to how he's going to take this guy on, but he knows he has help back inside. So his job is to get to the outside, figure out where that block's going to be, and try to make a play. He sees that, and here, as he's about to engage Henry, he's not even looking Henry's direction. He is looking down the field at Eckler, trying to see, can I duck under this block and get to the player before he reaches the outside? And that's exactly what he does. Just a little hand fight, a one-arm tackle, really nice play from an instinctive player in Armani Watts that we're going to see a lot more of. Here's another play with Armani Watts. Again, this is a different look, but after the Thornhill injury, they went to this look. There's Dan Swanson's on the field here. Neiman, Tyron Matthew, the corners, and then you have Fuller down here you know, lined in an off slot and Armani Watts playing the free safety deep. This is what they're going to have to do going forward, and it won't have to be all the time, but we talked about the injury. It is going to force both Watts and Fuller to play the deep safety more so than trying to get Matthew back there or even Dan Sorensen. You want those two, the way they are here, aligned in up near the box within no more than seven yards of the line of scrimmage. So the interesting thing is that this takes a little bit of doing, and this is Spags being implemented by backups. 
And that's important to notice because it's not a huge drop-off in what the scheme is now able to produce for these players. Uh, It's a two-down with, I think it's Saunders in here and Chris Jones that are going to get good push. This is Suggs and Frank Clark out on the edges. And that is going to help because the push, particularly that they get here on this side with Jones and Clark together, is going to help Armani Watts because it's not going to be exactly what it looks like. Pay particular attention to Dan Sorensen here because right here, this looks like an off-man situation, man, 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 with a single high. Watch where Dan Sorensen goes right here as the play starts. He's just diving for his zone because this is a zone. This is a four under two deep zone. And the way that this goes is it allows both Fuller here and Watts here to make plays in space. They're both best at that rather than trying to play man coverage. And right here, as Rivers is about to release the ball, which is still a bit of a question mark, he has beaten the corner coverage here. This is going to be his target. As he lets it fly, it looks like he's got a little bit of a space here in between. These underneath defenders are are running wild, and they're making kind of a, a bulk line in the sand here that is right about where the marker is here you can see the part of the reason it had to be delivered is the pressure up front and as the ball arrives Watts gets to make a play on it now he's just a touch short and this is completed that was a very tight window and I think what you're going to see going forward is that as Watts gets lined up he's going to be able to make more plays and be a little bit more instinctual. This was only a split second as he comes in here. Right now, the ball's in the air. He's just hesitating a touch. If he had actually driven on that, he might have had a chance to pick that off, and I expect to see more of that from him in the future. I like what we've seen from Armani Watts, and I want to see more of it. Let me know what you think. If you're not subbed, click that sub button right now. Hit the notification bell so you know what happens. Leave your comment below and leave me a thumbs up if you like this video. And tell me what you think about Armani Watts and Kendall Fuller as well going to this cover two, being the guys that have to be there. Appreciate you checking out me out today. Check the videos that come up now and I'll talk to you next time.